Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to talk about library provided functions. Okay, so up in, in our last video, we talked about user defined functions where we build them custom to ourselves. So we give them our, their own names, own functionality. One of the biggest uh, powers of the C language is this abundance of functions that have already been written for us. And these, you know, when C started in the 70s, it had a couple functions, right? And then as, as time went on, more and more people developed these functions and provided them within what we call header files for use by us today. And the great thing about these is that they have been tested over decades and we know that they work and it's just awesomeness. OK, <clears throat> so when we talk about a library provided functions, what we're talking about is was this thing called the standard C library. It's basically all of the specifications of the language. All right. And that that's data types, operation and functions. Now, when you think about C, uh, the way my mind works is there's kind of three levels of functions. And this is one of the, the trickier things when you first learn C, it, especially for me, especially it was like it was confusing to know, like, what's just like available to us without having a header file? What's available to us if we include a header file? And then there's even some header files that don't work unless you manually link them. OK, so th there's three levels in my mind. So level one is built in without needing headers. So this this is things like, you know, data types like int, float and if else. And it turns out there are functions that we can use uh, that are built in. Level two is is where you include a header file. So we've been doing pound include standard IO uh, in every program we've done. That is because we are using a couple functions in it such as printf and scanf and those are formatted text that you can print to the screen and grab information from the screen we use those constantly and that's what i think of as a level two is you just include the header file and you compile and it works <clears throat> level three is where you do include a header file but you have to actually put a specific command in the gcc line in order to manually link it and the one you will run into the most is math.h that one you'll do constantly all right there's so many functions it's impossible to cover them all okay it would take a year of videos to go through every single function and really it wouldn't be effective because the way that you typically learn functions in c is you learn a little bit of the most common ones and then you just learn where to learn about the rest of them and so what i always think is that if you ever run into a situation where you're like man i wonder if there's a function to like compare these two strings or these two pieces of text the answer is probably yes. So you should go out and see if that function exists. It probably does. And then you can research how you un or how it works and the input arguments and everything. Tons of resources online, tons, just overwhelming. But one that we've kind of found that's pretty good is tutorials point C programming. This website tends to be really good about just being straightforward, well organized and not overwhelming with the information the way it presents it. But it does have all the information. OK. All right. So let's code along here. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with a couple of the built in functions of C. So I'm in my I'm logged into the Linux server right here and I'm in my home directory. I'm going to change into that mod 07 code along folder we created in the last video. So I go ahead and do that. And then what I'm going to do is check a look in here and it's like there's my other little program files I was messing with. I'm going to create one called headers.c. So I'm going to say vim headers.c and now I'm in <clears throat> I'm sitting here in a new program file. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this up. So I'm gonna say playing with headers. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and not even do a pound include yet. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna say int main void and then open curly, return zero, and then uh, close curly. Go ahead and save that little buddy. And then here I am. Okay. I can come in here and I can do uh, int and then say a and then all that works. OK, so if I compile that, it will compile and everything is cool. OK, so if I'm down here, I'm going to change into my mod 07 directory. Here's the file. Oh, I'm in. Let me go to that. Let me check out where I'm at here. Mod, CD mod 07. I've got header.c, so I'm going to say gcc header.c, and then let me move this over so you can see the whole command there. Headers.c-o, redirect the output into headers. 
alone. Wall, good to go. All right, it's warning me that I haven't used A. That's fine. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> I, just, I just defined it, okay? <clears throat> now, this right here actually is a function that's built into C. It's main. So think about main right now. Main has a unique name, and it also has input arguments and output arguments. The input arguments is nothing. So nothing is provided into main, <laughs> but there is an output, and the output is integer. It's a type integer. Now you're like, where did you return something from main? That's what this is down here. So this right here, when main runs and, and closes, it returns zero to whoever called it. Now you're sitting there going, who calls main? Well, the operating system calls main. So Linux is calling main. So when you run your program, it runs a little startup information to get everything you know cleaned up with or to know where it is in memory. And then it actually runs this particular function. When it returns zero, that means main completed with no problems. If it has any other issues, it'll return a different code, all right? All right, so that's our first built-in function. Another one that's really interesting is called size of. So let me create a variable called a size. And I can actually do this. I can say a size equals, the, the function's called size of, and what it does is it will return the number of bytes in a particular variable. So in this situation, a is an integer, that's 32 bits or four bytes. This will return four. It's gonna return a decimal or an integer number of the, of the size of the variable, okay? So now if you wanted to print that, so notice that that works. So if I save that, and I'd compile it, I come down here and I'm like, compile. It's it's complaining that A size wasn't used, but it, it works, right? It's just that you can't see what's going on. But these are what I call level one functions. They're built in, main's built in, size of's built in, and those are built in. Now here comes level two, all right? Level two is where you're like, I need to put in some header files. So I'm gonna do pound include, and I'm gonna do standard io.h, and that will now allow me to use a printf function, okay? So now I come down here, let's do this. I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna say uh, printf, and I'm gonna say, ch -ch 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 -ch. Let, me, let me make sure I follow along here so I'm not getting too far. <laughs> so size of a is, <clears throat> and I'm gonna do boop, boop. That is print the integer in decimal format, Give me a line return, and then I say a size. And so now, z size, a size. Oh my, a size. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. So I compile it up, run it. Oh, I gotta run this thing. So I'm gonna do dot forward slash, meaning look in this current file, not in in this, not in the Linux path, and look at what I get. Size of a is four. Now that is sweet, that's four bytes. Let me do this with wall and see what happens. Same thing, life is good. All right, so that is cool. <clears throat> this is level one and this is level two because level one's built in, level two is essentially including the header files, but GCC knows what to do with it, all right? Now, this is where you start going, well, printf was in there, what else was in there? Well, you know scanf was in there and it's like, what else was in there? That's where you start clicking on, or that's where you go to tutorials point and you start bringing up you know, the website and you're like, okay, what does this end up looking like? This is what tutorial point looks like. It is essentially a website, nothing fancy, but here it is, standard library. It's got this nice blurry picture, picture from 1972, <laughs> but it has every header file in here. So if I come down here and I type on standard IO, click on standard IO, here's what's in here. You look at all these different things and you're like, whoa, there's so much in here. And it's like, what is all this stuff? And you finally get down to where F or print F is. It's not even like at the top. It's like way, way down here. <clears throat> I mean, it's not even, there it is. Okay, so it's way down here. And what it does is it takes a constant and it gives you the information on it and you can basically click on it and learn about it. So that's tutorials point right there, okay? All right, life is good. It's also got 
lots of other functions. Some of the ones we'll learn in this class are F open, F close to, to basically edit files. And we'll also do some uh, string operators. Strings are basically a, a group of text. Okay, so that's the standard IO uh, header file. <clears throat> Another one that's very common is standard lib. Uh, that stands for standard library. That's got some conversions between ASCII to floating point and ASCII to integer. It's got some memory allocation operators that are really interesting in there. And it's got a couple math operators. Totally random that it's in here uh, as opposed to math.h. But you can remember this because it's got a RAND function called random. <laughs> So I always found it was random to have the random file or the random function in standard library instead of math. But <laughs> then you've got string.h. This is going to be where we'll learn about strings in a different module. But you basically have characters that are lumped together in, into what we call an array. And there's a bunch of operations that you can mess with that. And there's there's need the operations are needed because strings basically represent the way we communicate as humans it's all ascii text so we don't tie we typically talk in sentences and we write in sense sentences <clears throat> and so there's a bunch of different functions that sit in here all right now let's go to level three level three and the only one you need to worry about with level three is the math.h function okay <clears throat> so math.h is a header file and they're all called header files, like standard IO, stdio.h, they're header files. You can also hear them called library files, but I don't know even know what the technical thing is. I think library represents everything that's in there, and a .h file is technically a header file, but a lot of times you hear people use them interchangeably. But I want to show you this. I want to go in here and I'm going to do pound include, <clears throat> and I'm going to use the math.h. Okay, so the compiler recognizes it and everything's fine, right? So like I come down here and I'm gonna GCC this thing and, and everything's great, okay? And I can even run this. So if I go to run this thing, it's it still works, right? Everything's still working. So here's what happens though. If you call a function that exists in math.h, the compiler actually won't know what to do with it because it's math.h is not automatically linked within GCC. <clears throat> so let's do, let's do one of these, okay? There is a function in here, really simple, called square root. So you, you give it a, a number and then it, it returns the square root. So let's, let's call that. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go get down here and we'll just, so come down here. Let's do it double uh, and let's do, let's call it B. And then we'll go, uh, it's 3.14, okay? And then we'll do another double, and we'll call it uh, square, okay? All right, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to go square equals square root of b. That is a function straight out of the math.h. Now, how did I know that? I went to tutorials point, and I found it, and I learned how to use it, okay? This one's really simple because it just takes one value. Now, watch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say printf, and I'm going to say square root of b is... And then I'm going to go ahead and put a format specifier for a double, which is long float. And then I'm going to do a line return, and then I will print the value of square. All right. So now I'm using a function out of math.h. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go ahead and GCC this. And it errors out. Okay. So look at what happened. It's like, no, you're not going any further. Error. LD returned one exit status. I don't even know what this is, uh, <clears throat> but it ain't good. It erred. It, it ain't going to compile. Here's why. It is using a function that it doesn't understand. And you go, well, it should understand that I included math.h. The problem is that this is not automatically linked. Remember what a linker does is it pulls all the different files and functions from that is needed for the program, and it puts them together into one kind of output object file. Well, standard io.h is built into that linker. Math.h is not. Why it's not, I have no idea. This language has been around for 50 years and we still have to do <laughs> The reason we, we don't, yeah, whatever. So here's how you do it. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in here. All you got to do is put an option that's dash lm, and that lm stands for link math link math.h. So I hit return on that. Look at how it compiled. Now watch this. I'm going to run this thing. And now I get square root of b is 1.77. Okay. So that, that was all you had to do. Now, this is important. If you ever use math.h and you get a compile error, 
it's because you didn't manually, manually link it, okay? All right, are there other header files that require this manual linking? And the answer is, yeah. But man, they are not in an introductory level class. They are like threads and curses and OpenGL and all this stuff I don't even heard of. <clears throat> Math's the one that you're gonna mess with the most, okay? How many functions do you think exist? There's so many, I don't even know them all. I just know that I need to know where they are and how to access them. So I go out to <clears throat> the tutorials point and I just say, anytime I ask myself a function, I need to do a task. Should I write my own function or see if one exists? It Go see if it exists because more than likely it does. And that is library provided functions. All right, see ya.